we are saying music is for everyone and we're trying to make affordable, accessible solutions to really make that a reality. <laughs> The key challenges that we were presented with was that how can this very custom bespoke item be transformed into something that was more suitable for mass production? How can we specifically transform Thomas's design? That's the challenge. And could we create a kit that could go out into the public and the public could utilise or could utilise with some relatively the low tech help and uh, the question was could we make the technology cheaper by mass production and could we make the fitting easier through the use of uh, some lateral innovative creative thinking. Thomas's solution was achieved with 20th century technology and it needs now to be brought into the 21st century um, to achieve much more efficient, lightweight, accessible cheaper solutions but with the same concept behind it. Obviously in the 21st century we're much more in, in, interested in additive technology so where you build from composite or uh, 3D printing and you build out from nothing to the component rather than taking away material to, relate, to, to reveal the component. If there are those thousands of children across the country at the moment who are being given wider opportunities, open access to making music. That's the, the headline that we're told is being achieved in schools, but actually those thousands of children are being denied undifferentiated access. We are bridging that gap. We are saying music is for everyone and we're trying to make affordable, accessible solutions to really make that a reality. I think the conversations are going to go on well beyond, you know, 2nd of October, well beyond 2020. And that's probably the most exciting thing, that collaboration, a meeting of minds um, that may achieve great things in the future. And we hope it will do.